In this presentation I am going to look at the exact Poisson test for one sample and two sample, the one sample lab test procedure and the two sample procedure. Uh, just as a sort of quick remark, I have three data sets here, X, Y, and Z, and they are essentially just Poisson random variables. They are, they're, for X, there are 20 values, 20 observations, and the rate parameter there is set to 4 uh, to generate them. Uh, likewise, Y, 15 rate parameter there, or as we call it here, lambda, is 4. And Z or Z, there's 20 of them, lambda is 5. So that's a little bit different. And there is the set seed there as well. So you can generate them yourselves. So if you actually, if you type in X, you should get, uh, let's do that again. If you type in X, and my thing is jammed up, come on. Uh, essentially, if you, like essentially, what we're going to do here is uh, do a one sample test on X, and then we are going to do a one sample, a two sample test on X and Y. There we go. And then just for the sake of comparison, X and Z. So this is the Poisson process X. And uh, this could be something like, for example, number of sales in an office over weekdays. Just important actually, this test is actually um, uh, assumes that the it is a Poisson process that each uh, uh, each uh, sort of uh, day in this uh, example or each uh, has an equal is essentially that there's no uh, different days don't have different uh, processes that uh, that happens actually in a lot that Saturdays and Sundays might have a different rate process a uh, rate parameter for the rest of the week essentially what we're saying is that these uh, values are assumed to be consistent the whole way through or are generated by the same process and each value is as likely to be um, come out as as you know each day uh, so essentially just consistency uh, consistency through each uh, 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 obs uh, observation. So, what are we going to do here? Well, the let's look at the um, help files and the te the command here is um, Poisson that test. So, what we could do here is go help uh, Poisson dot test. Okay. Now, I actually have it in the background, so I'm not going to run that, but that's what you do. And here's the help file. Now the thing is, uh, here we are, exact Poisson test performs an exact test of a simple null hypothesis about the rate parameter, the Poisson distribution, or the ratio of the rate parameter about, or for two sample tests. So it might be a bit hard, so what we have here, Poisson test, x, t equal to 1, r equal to 1, okay, that's essentially the number of events, a vector of 1 or 2, uh, the time base, and that's a, ve uh, a vector of length one or two, and the hypothesized rate or uh, rate ratio. Essentially, just up here, actually, the, uh, the, the, the it, actually I find this a little bit hard to read, for hard to follow. So that's why I'm actually doing this procedure. So essentially, just what I'm, I'm really going to draw from this is this is a vector of length one or two. So if one for one sample test, two for two sample tests. Likewise, down here. But anyway, let's go back to R and I'll show you how to do it. So let's just look at X here. So what I'm going to do here is Poisson.test and essentially the two arguments are as follows. So the sum of X, it's the total number of occurrences over the unit period, over, over this, the, the length of the process and, and the length of the process. Okay. And what we're going to also test is the rate parameter 4. Okay. Uh, let's just sort of scratch that for a second. Let's actually just sort of uh, uh, just check this. That the mean of x should give us our rate parameter. Here it's 3.7, close enough to 4. Uh, so how do you generate the mean? It's the sum of all the values divided by the length of all the values. That's why we're putting in sum and length there. Okay, so actually it's, what does it work out as the sum of x is 74, the length of x is 20, as we sort of knew from earlier on. Okay, so let's run that this again. And we're going to assume that the rate parameter there is 4. So r is equal to 4 here. Actually, do you know what? I'm, going to not, I'm not going to use that yet. I'm going to ignore that for a second. Pretend I didn't do that. So sum and length, let's run that. There we go. So the data and the time base is the number of events over the time base. So it's the number, like the total number of events over the total over the total number over the total number of days or unit uh, um, 
uh, event uh, periods. Okay, just actually sort of look at this here. True event rate is not equal to one. That's why we put in R is equal to four. We get a confidence interval here though for the rate parameter. So uh, 30, uh, 3.7 there, and we get a 95% confidence interval for that value there. That's actually quite handy. But anyway, let's go and do this properly. So R is equal to four. Okay, so there we go. Uh, this is actually the exact same again. So that's the 95% confidence interval uh, for our uh, estimate 3.7. Okay, the p-value up here is 0.358. So what does that? Uh, sorry, let's go back here first. Alternative hypothesis: true event rate is not equal to four. That means the null hypothesis is that it is equal to four. Okay. And the p-value says, fail to reject null hypothesis. Okay, so we're happy enough to sort of say, there's nothing to suggest it's not 4. Okay, there's not enough to suggest it's not 4. Uh, I'm just I'm being a bit hard and loose here about um, uh, what the what um, hypothesis testing is about. Okay, so that's good. Um, now we're going to do a two sample. Okay, so that's actually the one sample test done. What I'm going to do now is do for the two sample test, and let's go back here and sort of say a length of uh, for the two sample test a vector of length one or two. Okay, remember that. So we're going to look at Poisson process X and process Poisson process Y, and are they generated? Or do they have the same rate parameter? So how do we do that? Poisson dot test. So, vector of length 1 or 2 and a vector of length 1 or 2, okay? Now, we're not going to we're not going to put in anything here uh, a ratio. We're just going to leave that alone. So, it is the length, oh, sorry, the the sum of x and the sum of y in the first case. And the length Actually, I'm just going to put in 20 and 15 here, if that's all right, just to save typing. But it's the length and sum of x, and, uh, the length of x and the length of y, respectively. Okay. There we go. Uh, true rate ratio is not equal to one. That's our alternative hypothesis. Okay. So the rate ratio for x divided by the rate ratio for y, are they the same? Yes or no? Essentially what we're saying here is that there's, um, we are failing to reject the null hypothesis based on this p-value up here, okay? Failing to reject, so that means we're going to say, yeah, we can treat them more, uh, we can sort of assume that more or less the same rate parameter. And we got the, the 90, we got this estimate down here, 1.2, and this confidence interval here uh, 0.82 to 1.78. Yeah, happy days. Uh, let's just do this for y, or x and z, just to sort of have, remember that z had a rate parameter, we generated with a rate parameter of 5. Let's do the same thing again here. Uh, it had length 20. There we go. No, they don't. So, uh, in this case, a uh, small p-value, we reject the null hypothesis. The alternative hypothesis that is that they're not equal to 1 and that's sort of backed up by this 95% confidence interval and uh, sample estimate. Okay, uh, sorry, just to be clear about one thing here, um, the, uh, the length of x and z is 20. I'll just actually go back to where I generated that code just so you can remind yourself that I generated 20 numbers for X 15 numbers for Y and again 20 for Z okay that is Poisson test done